Hi, Apartment Therapy. I'm Amanda. And I'm Josh, and welcome to our 300 square foot apartment in Brooklyn, New York. So when we first moved into this space, I could see its potential. It had so much potential, it had so much light. I really loved all of the original detailing, but in order to get an apartment within our price range, we had to get something that wasn't perfect. We had to put a lot of work into it and undo a lot of what the landlord's workers had done. So a lot of what we had to do was just cleaning up and making it a better blank canvas for us to start with. I think the kitchen was the first project that we tackled. This corner over here was just atrocious. There was no storage at all. It was just a very thin purple bar and a painting that was, I don't even know how to describe it. It was like painted on the wall, but then framed with like trim. And so we ended up removing that bar countertop and then we installed these, this open shelving and we put a dresser here that we help hold like some of our extra dishes. It has our drum drawer. So we have a lot more counter space now and storage as well and it looks a lot nicer. Although you can still see the etching of the eat sign that the previous tenants had on their wall. In this corner over here, there was like a catty corner shelf. The tile around the kitchen was like white and gray checkered. It, it was not our style at all. So we ripped out those cabinets. We added cabinets up above the refrigerator and above this little hutch that we added. We helped a friend move and he, he didn't need that. So he just gave it to us for free. So, and it just happened to fit perfectly in that space. There was just very, very little usable space. Um, these cabinets here were all that we had. So adding cabinets and shelving really helped. Because we don't have a dishwasher, it's really easy to lose counter space very quickly. So we installed this drop down counter um, just in case we need extra like prep space or when we're bringing groceries in, um, we can hang our grocery bags underneath it and then put things on top of the counter while we put things away. And then we, we also, added this shelf up above here just to hold some plants and like some extra teapots and vases. Kitchen um, utensils. Yeah, we can hang our kitchen utensils and more plants up here. The bathroom was also a really big eyesore when we moved in. It was, it, it needed so much work. It's very, very small. The original window was... A basic vinyl window that opens up. So we removed that window and we put this lead panel door that now opens inward. We painted from, you know, the bottom of the wall to the, like even to the ceiling. I feel like bringing the color up that way really expands the room because it brings the eye upward so it feels much larger than it is. The tile in the shower was really gross so we just painted over it. I don't know if we did it properly but it looks good and it's lasted for a little while. We also installed these two cabinets above the door just to store like towels because otherwise there's no, there was nowhere to put things like towels or like extra shampoos or anything like that. And we installed um, a little floor cabinet in front of the toilet um, to hold some of our toiletries and just like some decorative things. This is our entryway. It was completely white when we first moved in. I wanted this to be just a very dramatic space when you walk right in because I want people to be just kind of wowed as soon as they walk in the door. So I wanted this very like rich, dramatic color from you know, the bottom of the wall to the ceiling. This is where I get ready there. I don't have a vanity area, um, at least not a place to sit. So this is kind of where I get ready and I hide all of my makeup and hair products in this cabinet here and under here as well. We needed a place to keep our heavy winter coats because there's no place to store them. So we put a like kind of a caddy corner pipe up here. And then we have like one of those like retail store um, hooks. Yeah, hooks to like reach really high hanging things that we keep there as well. So we're able to actually reach it without a ladder or Josh is able to reach it without a ladder. The floors, they're the same like parquet flooring that is in the rest of the apartment. And it was just in really, really bad shape. When we walk on them, Josh has gotten splinters. Little, little pieces, little pieces. would stick to your bare feet. And yeah. You'd, you'd step it's... and you'd have a, a big chunk of wood on, on the bottom of your foot. But also since we're having a baby, 
we need it to be safe. So we put down this peel and stick tile that works so nicely. I love like being able to define a space and using this different tiling really helps do that. We also <laughs> needed a place to put our books. Oh, right. We decided to just keep utilizing our vertical space, put some, some shelves over our door and I can just barely reach a book when we need it, but they're just right there. So this is our bedroom. Uh, when we first moved in, the walls were white. Um, it's only 80 square feet, so it's really, really tiny. Our bed took up like about the same width as the fireplace mantle. There was very, very little space to do anything, so we ended up lofting our bed. And so there's stairs here that leads to um, the second tier, and then we have the third tier, which holds our bed. And then when we you know, got pregnant, I was determined to make this space work for a nursery and I couldn't be happier with it. It's so cozy and charming and exactly what I wanted. And we utilized the space in the fireplace as like a little closet area. And we wanted a rug to kind of tie in the whole area together so that it was clear like what is the baby space and then what is my closet area. So here's our changing station. Um, we added this little changing table here with the little um, Kikuru peanut changing pad and we found this um, this little piece. We, we just sawed the legs off of it so that it would fit nicely. It just rests on top of the molding here and it stores like um, extra baby wipes and some diapers and any other little things and this little basket here is actually the trash can for upstairs by our bed, there's a little trash can lid, so when you put garbage in, it just falls down here so that I can collect it and bring it all at once instead of having to bring stuff down every time. In New York, there's actually supposed to be a window that leads to the outside, but our bedroom does not have that. It leads to the living room. So we had to get really, really creative with adding lighting. So we added these lanterns here, and then we added this piece of wood underneath the um, supportive beams that could anchor the pipe for the closet rod. And then we added recessed lighting to, to light everything, but now there's also storage. Um, so now there's four compartments for shoes or um, any other small items that you can keep up there. So the door that came with the apartment, it was just a very basic door, but when we built the loft, it was not functional anymore because it would hit the loft. So we removed the door and then we added this reclaimed brownstone door that I found on Facebook Marketplace. We put it on a barn door track so that it just slides open and it doesn't take up extra floor space and it's like way more beautiful and interesting than the original door. So this is the upstairs of our bedroom. We needed to utilize the vertical space because luckily it's got 11 foot ceilings because I can stand on this platform with some headspace, I could stand on the floor below with some headspace. I could sit on the bed and still have, you know, a couple inches of, of headspace. On either side of the bed, we have platforms. On this side of the bed, we have bassinets for, you know, when, when the baby comes, uh, the baby can sleep next to us. We have this flap here that opens up. So if Amanda's in bed and she needs a a water or something, she'll call down to me and she'll open the flap and I can hand her a water to s store things like sheets and extra pillows and bedding and stuff. We installed these cabinets here just above the mantle. Uh, it doesn't take up any additional space over the bed or anything. To install things into the ceilings, these are just tin ceilings. Um, so we, we put these boards into the into the ceiling to uh, just make it more structurally sound when we hung this lantern from the ceiling and the projector from the ceiling. We also installed a shelf here uh, to create like an additional workspace for, you know, if, if Amanda is working at the desk in the living room, I can lift this shelf out It'll lock in place, and then I have a little workspace right here. Um, we can both sit here together and, you know, have a meal if we want. And this drops 
back down. We can close these shutters. Uh, you know, if we want to take a nap, it gets completely dark in here. Or if we want to watch a movie or something, we can pull the projector down. And uh, we have the projectors set up here and uh, just watch a movie in bed. This is our living room. I saw so much potential in this room. The bay windows um, really let in so much light, had so much character, but it felt very, very small. The way that the previous tenant set it up, it didn't feel like a living room, it felt more like an office. I knew that I wanted to do something really, really bold and drastic, and I had this idea of creating a faux Juliet balcony. So these are actually like two fireplace mantles that I found on Facebook Marketplace separately. The doors, that are supposed to be like the balcony doors. Those were actually um, the doors of an armoire that we cut out the middle to make it look like a window frame. And then we just added some like wrought iron accents to it um, just to kind of make it look reminiscent of the balconies that we saw when we went to Guanajuato. The balcony itself is more like Mexican influence and I put some uh, Mexican tiles around the trim of the window but I wanted to make it render friendly. We attached the tile to some wood and then attached the wood to the frame itself so we should be able to remove it um, just fine with the tiles intact. I think the biggest challenge in this space was trying to fill the space underneath the faux balcony because we needed something that was like the right height and wasn't too deep. It was really you know, handy around Christmas time to make this place feel cozy. You know, We just put some Christmas ornaments around here and hung our stockings from here and it was really nice. But this piece is kind of like the perfect fit. I just wish that it had some storage to it. We really needed to utilize the vertical space. Again, bringing the paint all the way up to the ceiling, I think really draws the eye up. We just used a roller so that way it didn't pick up all the paint. Um, so the pattern really comes out. We changed the light fixture. It was a classic ceiling light. We changed it to this chandelier that was like, I, I don't know what kind of, it was just a glass chandelier, kind of like, like faux marble. In a bar. So we just hammered that out and draped these faux pearl plants to kind of frame it out. Just to give us a little bit more storage space, we put these cabinets up very high on the on the wall. Um, it just has you know some living room pillows and, and throw blankets in there. We ended up building a platform for our couch because our couch was just really really low. It just didn't feel right, and our floors are also very slanted. So with the couch on the floor, you could see with the wood paneling behind how crooked it was. So building a platform and trying to kind of adjust really helped with that. And now we have like a nice little spot to keep things underneath the couch. This desk over here, that was like an entry table console that had like a shelf at the bottom. So it wasn't gonna be good for using it as a desk. So we just removed the top piece and added some legs to the right height. And this top portion was like the perfect width for this window. So it just fits really, really nicely. If it was any deeper, it really would have like impeded on the living room space. And we really wanted a space for our baby to play and you know the dock a tot and have a little baby gym area. We just had to be really strategic. When you have a space this small, every inch counts. When we first moved here, the outside was um, pretty bleak. It was a wooden deck. The wood was not in good shape. And since we lived here, the wood just got in worse and worse shape, which I couldn't live with. So our solution was to get fake grass, which I I'm really, really happy with. I think it turned out really well. So there's tin roof that makes up the walls of our balcony. They were actually on the other side of the post at first um, when we moved in. So we pulled them to the other side, to the front side, and painted them this kind of like a terracotta color similar to our bedroom. And I think it looks so much nicer. We added a lot of plants, we added a fountain, we have a hammock that, that hangs out there. We definitely needed like a storage shed. We ended up getting this cabinet, uh, I think for free. Josh's tools are out there. Painting supplies, gardening stuff. It has glass doors, so it really looked very cluttered inside there. So my solution was to just staple uh, my favorite tablecloth. 
on the inside to disguise that and then also add a nice little decorative pattern to the balcony. Yeah, when we first moved in here, I don't even know if we knew that we wanted children. I think that we kind of decided in this apartment that like, that children were in our future. I know that babies come with a lot of gear, but I'm also a nanny. I've been a full-time nanny for the past 10 plus years. I'm really fortunate to know what products I like, what products I think that we need. And even though we would absolutely love more space, I know that it's not necessary, not at least until the baby's at least crawling. I think um, we probably have like a good six months after the baby's born to still feel comfortable here. In this space, what I learned about myself is that I really don't like taking no for an answer. I'd say it's really paid off. I mean, it did take some trial and error. When you when you go this bold and and have so many different colors, it's really easy for things to clash. And I'm not really someone who knows what works until it's in front of me. So I'm really, really fortunate to have such a supportive partner who allows me to experiment. And you know, it's not not just that he allows me to experiment because he's doing a lot of the physical labor. So He's, you know, he's just willing to, to do what makes me happy. And I mean, I know that he's also learned to kind of love this as well. Before we moved here, uh, I never would have thought that I would have been able to build a lofted bed in, in an apartment. Working with Amanda, she comes up with the ideas and I do my best to try to figure out how to, how to make it work. Like when we first got together, it would just kind of be me making decisions. And now he actually, I feel like you've learned so much like in this process where you have your own opinions and you're like, shouldn't it be this way? And I'm like, yeah, you're right. Like great eye, like it should be that way. But when I have like this crazy idea of like, I want to build a balcony in our living room, you know, Josh is like, okay. And I'm like, no, no, really, I want to do it. And obviously that you have to make some compromises, but I think what I just want people to understand is you don't have to make a lot of money to have like the home of your dreams. You have to just be willing to be creative and flexible and patient and sometimes you have to compromise. I'm proud of, of what we have built here and excited for this next chapter.